Have you been told that your solar system needs to be export limited? And if so, what does that mean for your solar production? Stick with me and I'll explain export limiting in three minutes. And I promise you I'll keep it simple. Welcome back to MC Electrical in Brisbane, where we performance test solar panels and crash test solar inverters and all that jazz. Now let's just get straight into it. Export limiting is applied to solar systems when you are approved to install a big solar system on your house on the condition that you don't send too much power back to the grid. For example, on a single phase home, Energex may approve you for a 10 kilowatt solar system as long as you don't send more than 5 kilowatts back to the grid at any one time. Now the main reason Energex or your electricity distributor will put on this limitation is just to protect their poles and wires from being overloaded with solar power. But how will that affect you, the customer? Well first, the good news. Export limiting won't really affect customers who use a lot of power in daylight hours. For example, let's say your export limit is 5 kilowatts. At lunchtime, your solar panels are producing 8 kilowatts and your household is using 3 kilowatts of that solar power. Well, then all is fine. You can send that remaining 5 kilowatts back to the grid. But what if you don't use much power during daylight hours? With that same 5 kilowatt export limited system, let's say at lunchtime your solar is capable of producing 8 kilowatts, but at the same time your household is only using 1 kilowatt of solar power. You'll have seven kilowatts of surplus solar power, so in the ideal world, you would sell all of that solar back to the grid. But your agreement says you're not allowed to. In this scenario, your inverter would be programmed to ramp down its production from eight kilowatts to six kilowatts. So five kilowatts would be exported back to the grid and one kilowatt would feed your house. So the obvious downside is that at that time, your solar won't produce as much power as it could. It'll be forced to run inefficiently in order to limit your export. On the upside, having a large solar system will mean more of your electricity usage will be covered in winter and on rainy days. And when you get a pool or an electric car, or if your family grows, your future power usage will be covered. Now, in the case that your solar system is being export limited regularly, you may want to consider setting your dishwasher or your washing me machine to run at lunchtime. You might want to put your hot water on a timer or on a smart relay. You might want to run your air conditioner on a hot summer's day so the house is cool when you get home. Or you might even go crazy and decide it's time to get a solar battery. Now, if you want to dig deeper into export limiting, Ben explains more in this video. And just to make things a little bit more complex, there is a smarter type of export limiting that is just being introduced to Brisbane at the moment called dynamic export limiting. But dynamic export limiting has had a bumpy start in Queensland. When the details of that get cleared up, I'll leave a link to a review about it here. I'm Mark, do me a favor and give me a thumbs up and I'll catch you next time.